right, good morning guys. This is gonna be day six of Tivoli part two. I'm just pulling up to uh, our yard and my property this morning. And we should have something uh, waiting for us. Here in just a second. There we go. So I brought the skid steer up here last night. And at like six o'clock, I got a text from Sean, our Bobcat delivery person, and he dropped off the soil conditioner. So our Bobcat dealer, believe it or not, they're, it's about an hour away. Um, they're in Walden, New York, uh, across the Hudson River. Um, like I said, it's about an hour. Uh, so it kind of stinks because anything, you know, parts wise or whatever, you know, the dealer's an hour away. Um, luckily, Sean, who works there, he lives right in Pauling, which is 10 minutes away. So when he comes home at the end of the night, he always takes his Bobcat truck, because you know, that's his job, and he'll bring us home, you know, parts and rental equipment. And uh, as long as the machine's here, he can access the machine, get it unloaded for us. And, uh, you know, so yeah, I'm gonna bring that down. Trailer's still connected down there. We're gonna get it hooked up. We're gonna head up to Tivoli. All right, we're gonna get this thing loaded up here. And uh, once Fitz gets here, we're, we should be good to go. We just gotta grab a couple hand tools. loaded up ready to go we just got to grab our couple hand tools and I'm gonna blow off the trailer because it's got a bunch of dirt on it but uh, see up in Tivoli well guys we just showed up and uh, we got a lot of rain the other day the driveway is a mess um, I don't know if you can see that stick right there there's a drain pipe that goes under the driveway that's just mega clogged uh, that's as far as I can back up in here. I'm spinning in four-wheel drive. So we'll try to get this thing unloaded um, That's enough off the driveway where we don't have to worry about it But uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get my ramps down since I can't back up anymore um, So this is gonna be a little interesting uh, We'll kind of figure out what we're gonna do to get this thing off of here and Then like I said, we got to start planting these rhododendrons today. So we're gonna work up a game plan and kind of go from there so i'll check in with you in a minute well so like i said i didn't think the ramps were going to go down just the way the ground slopes and i don't have the traction to be able to back up anymore so i think what we're gonna have to do um because i'm sitting on basically pure mud and the grass isn't any better uh we're probably gonna hook the excavator up to the trailer and give her a little tug back just so those ramps fold under there and we can get this thing off of here uh it's just the joys of working off road because everything up there there's no room to turn around uh or at least not today there isn't um they got excavators and things up there for working on the house so we'll do what we can to get this off of here and then uh like i said we'll figure out the next step 
Well, let's see how this goes. Well, teamwork makes the dream work. That was actually a lot easier than expected. All right, we're gonna get this thing unloaded and uh, see about getting to work here. It is really squishy wet. Um, the Harley rake is not gonna work today, but we're gonna be planting, so we'll see how that goes. I'll check in with you in a minute. Okay, so you can see we have the Rotostar on here. The goal is gonna be to dig the uh, hole for the rhododendron with the rotostar. I'll screen out the dirt, put it aside, and then any spoils and rocks and junk that come out, I'll put right into the bucket of the skid steer here. So we have nice clean dirt for the uh, plants to sit in. We'll go down the line and dig all the holes. And then uh, once the holes are dug, we can come back through and wiggle these things into place and backfill them. So I'll throw you guys up on camera here and you can watch us dig through this uh, planting holes. So as you can see, 
There's two of them done already, so Kurt's measured the, the height and the width and everything. We got a good bed for the plants to sit in, and then we have a nice mixed up backfill of the native soil here, which is very similar to the soil that uh, they came out of since we're only going right down the driveway. So we got uh, four more to do down this line, and then two more over there. Fitz is taking all those spoils into the back. I'm not gonna bother filming the rest of these because you just saw two of them. It's the same thing over and over again. And uh, we're just gonna dig through this real quick and then I'll check in with you when we get to something a little more interesting. The soil is very wet. Um, and and it, it is amazing what the Rotostar does to it. It's gonna make it really easy to do any shovel work. No rocks in there. So I'll check in with you guys in a minute. All right guys, down to the last two here. Uh, we got all those done. Fitz is taking that last load from the guys over there. We're gonna take some lunch real quick, come back to it, get these two planted, and then or get these two dug, and then we can start from that end, work, working our way down and planting everything. So like I said, we're gonna eat, and I'll see you in a little bit. All right, everybody. We have all of our holes dug, some beautiful soil screened out here. So, I don't know, I personally think this looks pretty cool. I haven't seen many sites where it looks like uh, perfectly screened soil next to a hole for each plant. So, we're about to get started. We'll probably start down here. I'm gonna drop the Rotostar. I got my, uh, my grading bucket over here. That's probably what I'll use uh, if I have to get down on the lawn to push or pull or whatever I gotta do to get the rhododendrons into their hole that's what i'll do i might use the gripper but we're gonna go through get these in stick them up twist them around to see how they fit and once they're in backfill them and work our way down the line and then once we're done with that we have some stakes we'll put some stakes in tie them up uh other than that it's coming along really well i cannot complain it is really cold i feel bad for kurt he's kind of standing outside he doesn't have a machine to sit in um, it's like he's sitting in the excavator right now warming up, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll do what we can here. I'll check in with you in a minute when we start planting these babies. So we got this first one going in, kind of like our uh, practice run, trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, they're all kind of funnily shaped, uh, just because they were in a cluster before and now we're trying to install them one by one. Kurt's shoveling some dirt under the backside here just so we can get them, excuse me, uh, standing as vertically as possible. So uh, once he gets a little bit of dirt under there, I'll let some pressure off of it, see how it sits. We might need to pull it up a little more. Fitz is grabbing some more shovels and rakes so we can uh, assist Kurt here. Uh, we'll get these uh, put in place here. We'll get all the dirt uh, packed in under there. Uh, it's nice working with this really, really soft, fluffy dirt. Uh, a lot better than just working with the wet mess that it would be otherwise. So, I'll check with you in a minute once we get this packed in here a little bit. Fitz will make his way back over here with some shovels and we'll uh, continue installing this guy. We got the second one installed. I'm not filming a whole lot of this because it's not really anything special. It's just kind of pick it up and plop it in. Um, maybe I'll film a couple of these when they go in. But uh, yeah, on to the next one. We're just trying to keep on going. It's already 2.30. And uh, we usually like to leave here by 3.30 because it is over an hour home. But we're going to try to get all these in today. And I'll check in with you in a little bit.
one's kind of that that shoots off almost horizontally because uh, if you look at the root ball I don't know what you can see but it's kind of sloped like this it really wants to sit like this but then that side would be kind of horizontal so we'll kind of plop this in here as is and see what it looks like those two came out really nice you know it's not perfect but like we said they're coming out of uh, a cluster that one I think will go in really nice the next one the next three will really go in uh, I think quite well uh, the first one the root ball sitting like this uh, just because it was really leaned over it must have been one of the edges that one came in really well no no problems with that but this one's gonna be kind of strange um, it's one of those things once they're in we'll be back here next season to put in a patio so we can uh, trim and adjust these if, if need be but the goal for today is just to get them in so for some reason here it keeps turning off on me I think it's because it's too cold but uh yeah everything's planted and backfilled it's not you know finished but enough to hopefully hold it from falling over so we'll be back tomorrow to take care of the rest of the planting and hopefully continue on on the job so I'll see you tomorrow all right good morning people of YouTube it's Nick from NK landscaping again we're still on Tivoli part two uh, I believe today is day seven if I'm doing my math properly uh, yesterday you saw us get those rhododendrons planted backfilled uh, none of them fell over overnight it looks like so that's good today Kurt and Fitz are gonna go around finish up any little hand trimming and clipping and then finish getting those fully planted I'm gonna hop in the skid steer uh, I gotta push over those piles in the back and then I'm gonna attempt to do some Harley raking uh, we had it rented yesterday today and Monday today is Friday we did not use it yesterday, so I'm going to try to get some use out of it today. I think it's a little too wet to do a whole lot with it, but I'll try to do what I can. And if it doesn't end up working out, I'll just bring it home tonight and we'll uh, give up that rental on Monday. There's no use in paying for it if it can't be used yet. So we're going to get set up here. Uh, I'm letting the machine warm up and then I'll uh, get to it. Okay, guys, so there's three piles back here. There was one right there. Uh, I just wanted to try that out as kind of like a proof of concept, make sure I can push it down the hill, that it's not too heavy or too stacked up. I think I'm able to do it, so I'll throw you on time lapse here real quick. You can try to watch me hopefully push these next two piles down the hill, just get this cleaned up. Like, this is going to be a compost area for the future, so it's, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be a lot better than a massive pile. Okay, this section turned out pretty nice. I mean, considering the stuff you saw us tear, excuse me, considering the stuff that you guys saw us tear out in this video, I'm pushing sticks and stumps and there's some dirt mixed in here, but I got that pretty flat. Uh, I still gotta go in this section. The camera couldn't see this, so I'm just gonna grab you guys. But I'm gonna go in this section, kind of smooth this out because it's still a little lumpy. But I'm gonna smooth this out. I got a little bit to move. Uh, and then once I finish cleaning this up, I'm gonna get the Harley rake out, come through this whole section. I mean, all of it, really. Uh, this is probably as wet as the Harley rake is gonna like. You can see it's it's pretty wet back here. Um, in the front, it's a lot worse. So this, I think, is solid enough where I can run the Harley rake over and maybe possibly the area over here and in the back of the house. But anything down by where we've been working by the rhododendrons, it, it's just terrible over there. So, uh, like I said, I'm just gonna come back here, do a little bit more cleanup, um, and then we'll hop on the Harley rake. 
All right, so I'm trying out the Harley rake here. It is working in some areas. Uh, it's still a little wet. I'm gonna try to work through this area. I know it gets really wet down there. There's a section to my right here. Let's try it out.
working my way around the property, you can see I just did this section in the back where we took the grass out. Uh, I worked down below the house. Uh, that wasn't actually too bad. I'll show you that in a little bit. I got to do a section right uh, kind of in front of the chimney there. Uh, there's just some lumpy grass. It's, it's nothing that we touched. It's just a little lumpy that we want to clean up. So I'll head over there real quick, finish that up, uh, and then it's going to be all the way in the front. All right, guys, it's quitting time. I did an extra horrible job of filming today. Um, like I said, the Harley rake was on rental. Well, it still is on rental uh, until Monday. And we kind of wasted yesterday having it here, not getting a chance to use it. But everything from the house back, uh, I did a rough amount of Harley raking there. And this was really wet, so I did a rough amount. It came out not too bad, but it's pretty sloppy. But everything from that birch tree and everything towards the house is done. So come Monday, we'll uh, finish up with the Harley raking and then get all that wrapped up. We're gonna bring some seed and straw with us. Excavator is done here, I believe. I hope. <laughs> uh, we're bringing this home tonight and all the attachments for it. So, thanks for watching again. I'll hopefully see you on Monday and uh, we'll try to turn this goopy mess into something. Alright, guys, see you later. Alright, good morning, YouTube. Uh, I don't even know what day we're on on Tivoli. I think this is seven or eight. Um, we're here this morning. It is cold. Uh, I think today it's gonna get up to like 34. I think it's like in the 20s right now. Uh, so everything is kind of frozen, which is gonna make it a little fun. Uh, the goal today is still to rip around with the Harley rake and finish up any sections that need to be raked, which includes that up to the trailer. Probably gonna go uh, uh, above the trailer there, hit that section again, and then anywhere where it's really frozen that we need to rake out because we have a bunch of hay. So somewhere in there is the four-wheeler, <laughs> kind of hidden under everything. You might, might be able to see it in there, but we're gonna get enough of this unloaded that we can get the four-wheeler out. Fitz is gonna go around and start spreading some seed and straw. Uh, I'll finish up, like I said, with the Harley rake there. This is the last day for the rental. So that's gonna be everything on this side of the driveway. And like I said, anywhere that still needs a hit, hopefully it breaks up this frozen stuff a little bit. The ground is still a little soft, so I think it should work. But I'm gonna get this unloaded here and I'll check in with you in just a minute. And uh, we'll go from there. So there we are, we got 30 bales of hay unloaded. We went with just uh, not the shredded bags because we couldn't get them. So these are regular bales of hay. Uh, I really wish we had a straw blower right now, but hey, it is what it is. I get the four-wheeler warming up. Fitz is going to take a ride back with the grass seed and the, uh, the spreader and start all the way in the back. If he needs some help, I'll, uh, I'll bring the Harley rake back there and beat this stuff around. But like I said, I'm going to hop in the skid steer in a minute here and just start raking through some of this stuff again. Uh, hopefully it's dried out a little bit since Friday. Um, you know, you could tell it's a little bit drier. This this was a dark, dark, you know, color, uh, just indicating a lot of moisture. You can still see some of that in there, but it did dry out a little bit, and the, the freeze might help it a little bit, stay a little, a little more dry. But we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna get the walkie-talkie set up so we can communicate with each other, and then we're gonna get to work here, try to get some stuff done.
guys. So I flew the drone up a little earlier before. It's tricky. The battery on this drone doesn't last very long in optimal conditions uh, and even shorter when it's 30 degrees out. So I went in the back. I helped Fitz out a little bit. I busted up some areas. Uh, luckily, since it is still frozen, it's busting up pretty good. I'm actually able to grade pretty well. I did that section in front and I did a one little pass behind the trailer there in that middle section. That section's getting a lot of sun and so is this front one, so it's kind of turning muddy again. Back here, uh, this is what I really, really rough graded on Friday and this was really sloppy. The frost is actually helping me immensely here. So I just did like a preliminary pass going at like a 45 degree angle here. So I'm gonna go up towards the trailer and then push all my uh, tailings into the woods there. I'm gonna do a little bit right here in front of the truck uh, and then I'm gonna cross the driveway but Fitz is still going through everything, putting down some seed and just hand raking out what he can. Um, like I said, this is this is a super rough uh, finish. I mean, we are going to be back here next season to do a patio and some other work. So anything that doesn't take, we'll probably have the Harley rake back out here again. We can do another pass. Um, and like I said, this whole property is under construction. So it's, it's an ongoing task. And I think at the end, we're going to come through and do a lot more lawn preparation next spring. So I'm going to throw you guys up on a quick time lapse. I'll probably put you on the trailer. You can just watch me sit through this area. It's working pretty good. Like I said, I don't have too many complaints, but I'll check in with you in a minute here. I'll throw you up on time lapse. You can watch me uh, zip. So this section is done, right, done, uh, Fitz is hitting everything with the seed. Um, I got this broken up pretty good, um, you know, like I said, the frost is helpful in the fact that I can bust up the chunks, digging down into it is a lot harder. Um, so as far as like grading things out as best as I want to, that's not really happening but I am able to break up those clumps, all those track marks in the mud from Friday. So it's working. It's uh, a little slower going than I'd like, but it, it's working. I'm glad to, excuse me, I'm glad to have the Harley right here. So I'm gonna go down uh, in front of these pine trees here. There's a little bit more that needs to get done. Then I can cross the driveway and get into the last section here. Uh, it says everything up there is looking really good. So name of the game is just to keep on going. All right, good morning YouTube. Back in Tivoli again. Today's straw day, hay day, whatever you want to call it. And like I said yesterday, we got a little toy to work with today. Excuse me, every time I get on camera. So a little rental straw blower with a hose. Never used one before. We're gonna give it a shot. Shouldn't be too bad. Got a nice recommendation from someone on Instagram, local to me, he said, hey, these things aren't too expensive. Give it a shot, give it a rent. That's what we did. So after a little bit of calculations, it looks like Fitz was able to get about 500 or so square feet per bale. And it was taking him five to seven minutes per bale. Um, you know, while he was spreading it, aside from any breaks or anything, it's not the easiest thing to do. So what I've heard from the guy that recommended it, you can get roughly a thousand square foot per bale with the straw blower. So we got 22 bales left. We'll see if that's enough to do it. We're actually gonna do a test shot down here, see how it works. And then once we know what we're doing, we're gonna start all the way in the back and work our way forward. So I'm gonna go over to the four wheeler here, get that thing warmed up, ready to tow that machine around. And uh, 
we'll see how that goes. We did find a local farm here that does have hay if we do run out. Um, I think we're gonna. So it's only a few minutes away so we can pick that up if we need. So yeah, we're gonna get started here, see how everything goes. And then uh, I'll check in with you in a minute. All right, here's the setup. I'm gonna give this thing a shot. So we got a little, a tiny little section right here. A little slightly bigger section right here, and then we're gonna go down and hit all the rhododendron uh, plants. This whole section's gotta get done. So we'll give this thing a test and see how it works. All right, guys, that was three bales. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around and do a first pass, try to get everything covered, because it looks like, I think we are getting pretty close to that thousand square foot per bale. Uh, we're gonna do everything. We're gonna get everything covered, see what we have left for hay. If we need more, we gotta get more. If we don't, and we have some extra, we'll go back over all these areas, any light spots. This is working great. Fitz is liking it, especially compared to doing it by hand. It looks so much better and it's just so easy. So, like I said, we're gonna go get some more bales. I'm probably gonna throw the drone up so you guys can get a cool aerial shot of this. And then uh, I'll check in with you in a minute.
All right, guys, threw the drone up for a little bit. It's getting warm out here, thank God. Uh, this is working great, this is awesome. I'm so happy that we decided to do this. Um, we're just gonna keep going. Uh, I threw the drone up for a little bit. You probably just saw that actually. Um, what our plan is, I changed it up a little bit. Instead of going in the back, we're gonna work our way down this section, down to the truck, do that little bit of what Fitz did yesterday, and then uh, we'll see where that's getting us. Four bales on top of it. So we're seven bales in on this section so far. Uh, that's a lot better than doing it by hand. So I'll check in with you in a minute. All right, guys, we're making progress. Um, like I said, we haven't done the back of the house or the other side of the driveway, but we did from the center section around this big section up to the trailer here. So you can see the difference. Um, this is the blower spread. This is a little thin in this area because this is where we ran out. But this is hand spread. You can see how much thicker it is. It's not chopped up or anything. Um, we're gonna go get some straw from this guy down the street. He's really local and has some good prices. Um, this thing is rattling itself to death. We got bolts falling out. This whole shield is coming apart. This bolt is completely loose and it's running like crap. Um, it's just how it goes when you get a rental unit, I suppose. So it'll hopefully get us through the day. Um, like I said, we're probably gonna pick up between 15 and 20 more bales. Um, it's rough work, but it's better than doing it by hand. So I'll uh, check in with you in a minute. We're gonna go run to this farm down the street, pick up the hay and go from there. So luckily, like I said, this place is legitimately two minutes down the road, one and a half miles away. So we're gonna go get some extra straw. I'm, I'm hoping for between 15 and 20, kind of depends on what we can fit in the truck. Um, but I'll check in with you in a minute here. Oh, with the help of a nice farmer named Don, 20 bales of hay. So that should finish us off just right. And if we need more, he's just right down the road. But I doubt we will, we got a little extra. I'm thinking about raking up a lot of this hay and resending it through the mulcher there, uh, the blower, and kind of redo this area since it's so clumpy. Uh, we still gotta do that area in the back where the trailer is, this lower area, and this section, uh, and the rhododendrons. So, we're gonna get to it here. We're actually gonna eat some lunch real quick, uh, and then get to it. I'll bring you back in in a minute. All right, guys, end of the day. I think we got everything covered in straw. We left the bale here for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow should be the last day, get everything out of here. So skid steer with the trailer and the four wheeler, we can get all that on there. Straw blower's going back. Um, yeah, it came out good. Um, I'm gonna fly the drone up just to get some aerial shots of this and then I'll probably do some more tomorrow. I think the only thing that's left uh, on the bid was uh, to wrap the rhododendrons in deer fencing. Um, we bought a bunch of two by threes to stake them. And I think we're gonna do that still. Uh, they're actually in there pretty good, but if we need to wrap them in deer fabric, we're gonna kinda need stakes around them anyway. So we'll see, that'll be tomorrow. If we get to that, I know we have some deer fabric in the yard. Um, and it just really depends on how frozen the ground is. It's warmed up enough today where we could put them in, uh, and tomorrow looks like it'll be pretty warm too. So, tomorrow's the day before Thanksgiving, so we're gonna get finished up here. So I'll fly up the drone, I'll show you guys, either today or tomorrow, whatever. Maybe if I fly it up again tomorrow, will show the difference. But I'll see you guys tomorrow.
Alright, good morning YouTube. Nick with NK Landscaping again. Tivoli Phase 2 again. This is the last day. It's Wednesday. It's the day before Thanksgiving. You saw yesterday or in a previous video, I'm still not sure. We finished up all the straw. You see this is the attempt number one of hand spread straw versus straw blower straw. The last and final thing we need to do here today. We're going to stake the rhododendron row. So we have some rope, we have some stakes, and then we have some deer fencing. The deer love to munch on rhododendrons over the winter. The buds are really tasty, I've heard. Um, so I'm gonna get the skid steer loaded up. Uh, we don't need it anymore. So we're gonna get this trailer cleared off. Uh, I can get the skid steer loaded, and the four wheeler is gonna go right on the dovetail. So uh, Kurt and Fitz are gonna get started over there hopefully the ground is soft enough where we can pound some stakes in and we're gonna get going here get wrapped up shouldn't be a whole day should be a pretty quick process so i will check in with you in a minute once things get moving all right got the trailer cleared off ready for the skid steer let this baby warm up for a minute here at least today's a little warmer i think it's like 37 it's gonna get into the 40s so we'll warm this up load it up strap it down do all the uh installs on the rhododendrons and the four-wheeler will just fit on there so here we go Especially since we have the brush cutter on the front so that thing's like 1200 pounds or something like that uh, and then you know the center of gravity on the machine is right about track uh, the, the drive motor right about where that is so I want the weight to be more tongue heavy in this case I can't really go any more forward unless I spin the machine around but in that case that'd be too much tongue weight so this should be good I'll uh, get this thing chained down here and we'll uh, have this section here for the, the four-wheeler. All loaded up and strapped down. That WD-40 works wonders. So I'm gonna give these boys a hand over here. They got a few of these staked out already. Um, we're out of metal stakes now so we'll go to wooden stakes. Looks good. All right let's do it. Like I said, we chewed through our metal stakes. So I'm just taking these two by threes that we bought last week, cut a nice 45 on the end. So they're nice pointy stakes. Fitz is going to get the rest of them. And uh, well, I think what we're gonna do is just do a line. That's what Kurt's thinking. Uh, hopefully we have enough deer netting. If not, we're gonna have to run out and get some. Those got done as one big circle uh, around both two. So this is gonna be the same thing. So. Oh no. All right, I'll, uh, Fitz is gonna bring back some more wood. I'm gonna cut more pointy boys and we'll go from there. So Kurt wanted to make a quick point here about these wooden stakes. Yes, sir. These wooden stakes, they're eight foot long two by threes. 
And if you're using a six or seven foot deer fence, which is pretty common if you want to keep the deer out without having them jump over, by the time you stake this in the ground, you're gonna have six, seven feet of post left, perfect length for your deer fence. Whereas these metal posts you buy at the store, five, maybe six foot in length if you get the big ones. And by the time you pound them in, you're left with four feet. Not enough. Knowledge, it's a powerful thing. And you save money. Yeah, you do save a lot of money. These things are cheap. And you can cut them to whatever length and size you want. Um, yeah, so Fitz is picking up some more of those. He's uh, stacking them in there, Mr. Lumberjack. And we'll get these things pounded in the ground here. These these are not pounded in yet. You can see how tall they are. So we got our big fence post pounder. And we're probably going to have to stand on the four-wheeler and beat the crap out of them. But ground is not too frozen today. It's got a little bit of frost in it but just enough to allow us to pound these in. So here we go. All right guys, between me and Kurt, we pounded all the stakes in. I just pounded this last one in and I think I hurt my arm a little bit, but it is what it is. We're gonna throw this deer netting up. I got some, um, some zip ties in the truck. We should be able to attach the deer netting in place. And that should be a wrap. So, give us a few minutes here, reconvene, figure out what's going on, and get to it. Okay, so we did what we could with the material that we had. We gotta run out to Lowe's in Kingston and pick up some more deer fencing and maybe a couple more two by threes. There's some sections where we're getting some sag uh, just cause the, the shorter stakes are not in place. Uh, but the section, like the second half of that, where we have, it's basically every other is a two by three. It's looking really good. So we're going to need two more rolls of deer netting and probably another five or so, uh, two by threes. Uh, we'll run that out and grab that, which put the four wheeler away for now and disconnect the gooseneck that I hooked up this morning. <laughs> well, we're at Lowe's. Oh, he's got the cart. Very nice. We have secured the two by threes. Now on to some deer netting. <laughs> That's how we do it here. All right, guys, that is a wrap on Tivoli part two. Loaded up, ready to go home. I got the four wheeler back there. Everything else is loaded up. Deer fence is installed. Rhododendrons are planted. Brush is ripped out. Seed and straw, Harley raking, all that. And you have a view to the house from here. Uh, really all spots on the driveway. That was the whole goal. So as usual, I wanna thank you guys for watching. I wanna thank you guys for commenting and all of it. So if you want to throw a like, a comment, a subscription, anything down there would be great. It does help me out. That's that. So I'm going to throw up the drone real quick, get some final outage footage. And we'll see you here again next season for patios and whatever else this client wants to do. So keep watching. We got lots of videos coming out weekly still. So thank you guys. We'll see you next time.